Hello again, friends, and welcome back to another chapter of Bomb Squad Academy. We've gone through four chapters so far, and now we're going to move on to the fifth, which is Capacitors. Let's get started. So this is a capacitor. Capacitors can be charged and discharged. Let's see what that means. As a capacitor lets current through, it also starts to store some of that current. Flip the switch to see what it looks like. Now the capacitor is charged. Now flip the switch back off. Once it stops receiving current, the capacitor is still able to supply current out for a short period of time. It's like a tiny rechargeable battery. Take your time, we're just getting started. So it says here, capacitor maintains charge. Alright, as a minimum we have to keep the detonate path from being energized, so we need to turn this switch. Now we have three capacitors, each leading to a disarm path. Now we can make this work for us, we can't turn the switches and have them go through all paths simultaneously, but if we charge up each one, as long as there's still some charge in them at the same time, we'll be able to light up disarms A, B, and C, and disarm the bomb. So, let's do this now. And we did it. We've saved everyone. All right, let's move on to the next. Hurry, you must disarm this bomb. All right, we have a couple of push buttons and a couple of wires. Here's the detonate path. Now, we need this wire because if we push the button, current will flow through it and half satisfy this AND gate in order to disarm the bomb. So what we have to do is make sure that nothing flows through this pathway or this capacitor. That in turn means that this AND gate cannot be fully satisfied. It's already half satisfied here. However, we can cut this wire so that when we push this button, we'll satisfy this AND gate, charge the capacitor, satisfy this AND gate, and disarm the bomb. So, cutting the wire now. All right. Now, we're gonna push the button first, charge the capacitor, and then while the capacitor is still supplying current through the AND gate, we'll push this button. So here we go. And there we go. Great job defusing that bomb. Why, thank you. All right, we're doing well. Let's go on to the next. Disarm the bomb. Yeah, no kidding. All right, this one's tricky. This switch needs to be right where it is. But if you notice, all we can do here is toggle between the A and B disarm. That's not going to help us. But if you notice, our one battery is supplying power through this switch, through this bank of capacitors, and then through this bank of capacitors. If I turn off this switch, these capacitors will eventually discharge, which means that these capacitors will discharge, and then there will no longer be power to the bomb controller. So let's turn this off now. Okay, it says use the I'm done button to speed up time to see if you made it. Alright, we'll do that now. And it's done. Alright. All right, let's keep on trucking. Can we disarm this bomb? Well, I hope so. All right, we have a detonate path here. Whatever we do, we cannot push this button. However, we have several capacitors on separate pathways leading to disarms A, B, and C. So if I can charge all of these capacitors at the same time to light up A, B, and C at the same time, we'll disarm the bomb. But we can't charge these guys up until we charge this capacitor up first. So I'm gonna have to move quickly. And 
And we did it. And we saved all the children. Hooray! All right, moving on to the next. Hurry, you must disarm this bomb. Well, you told me that before. All right. This one's interesting. We have an exclusive OR gate. We're safe as long as current is flowing through both of these at the same time. Or if the current flow into the inputs stops at the same time. We can use that to our advantage. Now, just like one of the other bombs, power is being supplied through this capacitor. If we cut the supply, we'll cut the supply to this capacitor. Once it's done draining, the controller will lose power. Problem is, we have to make sure we lose power uh, before we have, to, we have to make sure that we don't accidentally detonate the bomb here. Now, like I said, if we lose power to both of these inputs at the same time, that will protect us. So we've got two pathways here and here. If we can put the same amount of capacitive charge on each of these two pathways, we can make that happen. So let's count off. We've got eight here and then five plus three. So if we redirect the current flow, we can make this work. So I'm gonna start over here, here and here. And then again, here and here. I did the left side ones so the current would flow through the right side ones um, and not trip the bomb. All right. So let me cut the power now. Okay, here it comes. Okay, here we go. And we did it. All right. All right, let's move on to the next. Pay close attention. All right. Uh-oh. If that runs out of charge, we'll lose the exclusive orb. Better turn this on. Phew! That was a close one. All right. Now... As long as we have current flowing through these two guys, we're fine. However, we need to drop one of these two paths so that the current will flow through the exclusive ore and satisfy the bee. Alright, let's see what we can do here. If I cut this wire and then turn off this switch, for a brief time, current will flow through here. Current will also flow through here, but this will discharge uh, sooner than this will. But in a brief moment, we will have current flowing through this exclusive ore, and we will be able to disarm the bomb. So let's try just turning it off like so. There we go. We did it. Saw the trap and avoided it. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. Capacitors and XOR gates. So fun. Okay, this is interesting. We have two pathways. If they go into this AND gate, kaboom. We have these two wires, but they're the only ways for signal to get to the A and B disarms. So we can't cut those. We have capacitors, and then we have an alternate pathway for each here and here. So it's possible that I could turn these guys on temporarily. Once I turn the switch on and then off, this pathway here and this pathway here will stop, but current will flow through the capacitors in each. So let's turn this guy on and then off, and then this guy on and then off. 
Aha, see that? That did it. Excellent. Okay, we're cooking with gas here. On to the next. Hurry, you must disarm this bomb. Well, yeah, you've told us several times now. This one's special. This is an F-bomb. I try not to use those. Alright, this one's tricky. We have an ore gate. So if anything goes through here or here, it's all over. Right now, we're safe for the moment because current is flowing through both of these. Now, we need to push this button eventually because there's a wire here carrying us to the A-side disarm. Now, I want to keep these alive, which means I need to keep both of these OR gates satisfied. So I'm going to start by throwing this switch. Okay, that's good. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to cut both of these wires, the red and the orange. Because if I cut the red wire, then everything that's going on with these OR gates is going to flow at the same time through this capacitor. Which means that when this capacitor finishes discharging, then both of these pathways will be dead. And if we've cut these two wires, there will be nothing coming out of the OR, which means nothing will be going into the exclusive OR, which means nothing will go through this other OR gate into the uh, pathway here. So I'm going to cut this wire here and this wire here. Okay, we're still good. So when I turn off this switch, we will have signal once the capacitor discharges. Actually, when I turn this off, this leg will completely drop, but there will still be charge coming out of the capacitor going through here. We also have this button, so I'm going to have to turn this off, and while the capacitor is still discharging, push this button so that we can light up both the A and the B. So we're going to do that now. There we go, we did it. Excellent. All right, let's keep going. Ooh, somebody's getting fancy. All right, got another exclusive ore here. But I wanna make sure that we have inputs going into both of these because if both inputs are getting current then nothing will come out. So I'm going to set this switch here, because we have a branch off point here. I want current flowing through here. And while we're at it, if I turn this switch, we'll have current flowing through the exclusive ore here to do what we need over here. But we'll also have current flowing through here and half satisfy this AND, which is what we want. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, we're good there. Now, I don't want to turn this switch, because if I do... I will stop current going through the uh, exclusive ore. And the thing is, if I stop current going through the exclusive ore, that means this leg drops and charge will still flow out of this capacitor and trigger the bomb. I can't touch this one. But I can touch this one. Current will flow through the exclusive ore, through here, through this wire, satisfy this end. It will also flow through this exclusive ore, through this pathway, through this AND, and this AND will be completely satisfied and disarm the bomb. So get ready, here we go. Excellent. I knew you could do this. Well, thank you. All right, let's keep going. I hope you can do math quickly. All right, this is the last one. All right, this is interesting. We have a detonator path here. We have a couple of exclusive ores, and we have some of the inputs hardwired to this battery. Now, we don't want this pathway. We we don't want this ore gate. Uh, 
passing a current until some point in time after the disarm path gets energized. So we need... The only way this gate is going to pass current is if all of these capacitors discharge. So we need these capacitors to discharge faster than this bank over here. So we're going to have to count off here. All right. So what's the shortest time for this pathway to fail? Well, we've got 8 here plus 3, that's 11. The other option is 8 plus 6, that's 14. So 14 is a magic number. All right. Now, let's look at our other options. We have 5 and 9. That's 14. Actually, I did the math wrong. This is 8 plus 3, that's 11. That's good, We that's, that's shorter than anything else here. Because this is 5 plus 5 plus 5, that's 15. 5 plus 9, that's 14. Okay. Now meanwhile, we want to have this stay up as long as possible. So we have 5, 10, 15. This is good where it needs to be. All right. So let's put it to the test. Let's turn the power off. And we did it. We've just saved everyone. Awesome. All right, so that's the last level dealing with capacitors. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you'll join me next time for another chapter of Bomb Squad Academy.